Good evening. My name is Minister Linda Brown, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I truly hope he is your Savior as he is mine. This evening, I want to first thank Dr. Dainty Jones and the house that Dignity built to give me an opportunity to share with you what the Holy Spirit has given me to share with you in collaboration on talking about this peace movement. And so this evening, I really want to talk with you about participation and peace. And just to give you a little introduction, to participate is to actively share in something or take part of something. Participation requires the participant to cooperate and engage in a particular condition, whether negotiable or unnegotiable, like or dislike. Actively participating is a condition common or uncommon that pushes the participant to another level and from the experience he or she have the opportunity to self-assess their faith status. And this brings me to the topic this evening about participation and peace. Not just any peace, but we're going to be talking about the peace of God. Participation in your emotions is the first thing I want to address. Because in life, we're constantly participating in life's challenges. By constraint participation, meaning we're forced in a less desirable situation that causes sometimes fearful emotional interruptions with or without our permission. And there is the participation of acceptability. This kind of participation means you want to or even encourage yourself by the acceptable emotional interruption that you're delighted to participate in. Situations that ultimately result in making you feel good. Everybody likes to participate or engage into something that gives them a good feeling. Even now you are participating with me. You have engaged in this message. But what happens when you're forced by a controlled persuasion, the undesirable, that makes you participate? Let's look at a persuasion found in Mark chapter 4, verse 36 through 39. And this is from the King James Version. I have a question. Is Have you ever been caught in a storm? Not just a storm. King James Version chapter 4 and 36 says, describes it as a great storm. Storms require the participation of wind and water. When the wind and water rises up in your life and starts to participate together, it's when the wind and water in your career, perhaps, such as a pink slip, that tells you you just lost your job or the wind and water of your life during a doctor's visit and the doctor tells you you're sick or the wind and water is when you find out you are standing before a judge in a courtroom pleading your case. These elements of storm has begun to participate against you. And it causes you to become upset or angry or frustrated. But not only the wind and the water, but what happens when the sea starts to participate? Because storms usually start out on water, the sea, the ocean. So when the seas in your life starts to shift you, to sway you, back and forth. And the scripture says that the wind and the water caused the boat to be covered with waves. And when your life is covered with waves, panic steps up like it did the disciples. They started to participate with panic. They started to participate with fear. It is the same, with the, same way with us. Beyond the pink slip, it's you can't get unemployment benefits. That's the sea moving. You didn't just get a warrant or you didn't just stand before a judge in a courtroom. 
you just got told you may go to jail. Or when the ocean starts to move and you're not just sick, but the doctor tells you, you won't even get well. It's beyond getting upset. It's beyond angry or frustration. When the sea starts to rock the boat of your life and it just got covered with waves, then you panic, then you fear, and your emotions are involved and you have just decided to participate with fear. And as fear grips you, you grab a hold of it. Or perhaps you're in a situation that makes you participate even in deep waters where your lifeboat is being beat upon by the winds and pushing you far from your land, just like the disciples. Their boat was being beat upon by the waves and the wind just before the breakthrough. They started seeing things out on the water. And sometimes that happened to us just before breakthrough. We start to see things. Things that appease fear. And then you begin to participate with it. Kind of like the disciples. Let's look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 33. Disciples struck out in their boat. And as the winds pushed them far from the land, just before dawn, they saw something walking on the water and it frightened them they didn't even know what it was until they saw it was jesus and then peter acknowledging him jesus told him don't be afraid jesus says come peter acknowledged jesus he said lord if it is you tell me to come out on the water and jesus said come come on that's in chapter 14, 22 through 28. And when Peter had his eyes fixed on Jesus, the peace, the Prince of Peace, he walked on the water. And sometimes we walk on water when our eyes are in the right direction, up. Walking on water is so smooth, but when we look down at the circumstances, all of a sudden we lose footing and we start sinking and our sinking thinking, just like Peter, we start allowing ourselves to participate with that fear, even if only momentarily. But then he did something. Like most of us, he cried out, Lord, save me. Isn't it wonderful that when you're in a situation, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can say, Lord, save me. He called on Jehovah Shammah. The Lord God who is always with you. And the Bible says in the NASB chapter 14, 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Which takes me to our participation in peace. This kind of peace, you get a transformative experience from not just any peace, but the peace of God. In Mark chapter 4, 36, the disciples participated with peace. They participated with Jesus. Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Matthew 14, 21 through 31, Peter participated with peace and peace saved him and let him walk back to the boat. And there he worshiped him. And when we call on Jesus and when God delivers us, we immediately go into a praise. We begin to worship him because he has just delivered us out of a situation. Peace came and stepped in when the storms come with strong winds and heavy rain that causes you to shift. Just participate with peace. Let peace catch your hands. Let peace rebuke the winds of sickness in your life. Tell it to be still. Tell poverty, peace, be still. Whatever storm is in your life, tell it peace, be still. From victory, pray with peace. Walk with peace and let peace be your umpire. Oh, I hope you've been encouraged by this message. And let the irrevocable word of God be manifested in your life. Participate with him to love unconditionally. Participate with him to challenge possibilities diligently. Pursue with him opportunities wholeheartedly. And expect God's favor enthusiastically. Let peace bring you joy. Let peace bring you comfort. Let peace be your guide.
I'm Minister Linda B. And may you always participate with the peace of God. Be blessed.